Well, I'm on a roll today. This is my third video in a row. Um, I'm trying to catch up for lost time. Unfortunately, I've been very busy the last little while. So uh, trying to get this stuff out is kind of difficult. So uh, as always, I try and take my opportunities when they present themselves. Uh, this video is going to have to do with, um, with what Jehovah's Witnesses believe will happen to people who do not become Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, I cannot tell you how many times I have a discussion with the Jehovah's Witness or I'm online and somebody tries to argue with me about this subject. Um, and I understand because it's hard to accept what the organization teaches about what happens to people who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses. But um, hopefully going through this video, um, my points will make sense. And as a Jehovah's Witness, if you're watching this video, hopefully you'll be able to agree with me and, and see um, where I'm coming from. Now, within the witness theology, essentially what is taught, or not essentially, what is taught is that anyone who does not devote themselves to the organization, anyone who does not become a Jehovah's Witness before Armageddon comes, um, those people will be killed. Now, there's no ifs, ands, or buts when it comes to that. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Anybody who does not believe what Jehovah's Witnesses believe will be slaughtered by God at Armageddon. Now, at the present moment, that number represents about ni over 99% of the population. So, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus and the angels and the 144,000 are going to come back and they're going to engage in the biggest, most extensive genocide that has ever happened in the history of mankind. They're going to wipe out 99% of the population, leave the earth a barren hellscape, and then Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, who will be the only ones to survive this genocide, will then take over the earth will improve the earth. They'll supposedly improve the earth and slowly work towards uh, making it into a paradise. And then from there on out, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses will be the only ones to live on that earth. What will be the disastrous result for those not serving Jehovah? The slain are going to be from one end of the earth clear to the other end. That's what I told you earlier. It's going to be very numbing. A lot of dead people been warning them, just like he did before the flood. A lot of dead people. Billions. And now, <clears throat> it's just very, very concerning for me. You see, I was uh, in Vietnam, a medic in that war. Uh, I've seen what happens to humans when they're mangled. You see it on TV and some of that. Well, until you smell human flesh burning from a helicopter crash. People that look like uh, humans, like a hot dog on a grill, blackened and splitting open. I know what's coming at Armageddon. A lot of dead people. A lot of dead people. When it comes, it's going to be numbing for you. You think seeing a deer mangled on the side of the road from a truck that hit it is upsetting? You see humans like so it's going to be numbing. Stop and think about the war of the great day of Jehovah the Almighty. If you haven't lately, just slow down and pause. Now, personally, I was in a war in the, the Vietnam War in the middle of all kinds of bombing and casualties and all sorts of things. Uh, the trauma from war. So I've seen it. Now you, you could see a goat or a cow hit by a car on the side of the road, see humans like that. It's different. Jehovah inspired them. Those slain by Jehovah will certainly come to be in that day from one end of the earth clear to the other end of the earth. So here in Trinidad, Tobago, Guyana, 
will be dead people everywhere. Oh yeah. It's gonna shake you up. Now, they do believe that people who have died in the past will have a chance to be resurrected. Not the people who died at Armageddon, of course. Those people and their children, um, those people will all be slaughtered and there will be no chance of them ever being resurrected, according to Jehovah's Witnesses. But anyone who died before Armageddon started, uh, <laughs> theoretically anyone who died even a second or a minute before Armageddon started has a chance to, um, has a chance to be resurrected and be forgiven. So <laughs> essentially you could have two people laying on their deathbed side by side in a hospital, husband and wife even. Uh, good people, they've lived their entire lives trying to give to charity, uh, working with impoverished communities, uh, working with uh, going to areas in the world that have suffered disaster or, or poverty or famine or any of those sorts of things. Uh, just genuinely good people. And the husband dies uh, 30 seconds or a minute before Armageddon starts. But the wife, she doesn't die quite yet. And so Armageddon starts while she's still alive and God sends all of his angels and everything. And because that woman is not a Jehovah's Witness, she's going to be slaughtered along with everyone else who is not a Jehovah's Witness. And yet her husband, uh, later on, after all of the dead bodies are cleared up and, and all of the all of the death and destruction are clear and the earth starts to become a paradise, um, the husband will supposedly be resurrected to find out that his wife was brutally murdered by, by this God who is now going to ask him to serve him and to love him and to agree with his morality and his sense of justice. Um... I hope I don't have to point out the issues here. Um, I, I can't imagine anything more immoral than killing massive amount, killing 99% of the population just because they don't believe that eight guys in New York were chosen by God. Like, what? Like, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I really can't. Like, it... It is amazing to me. It's amazing to me that I ever believed that. And you know what? I didn't for a good majority of my time as a witness. I couldn't believe that. And so I believed that if you were a good person, God would read your heart and he would determine whether or not you would live or you would die. Now, that is, I guess, a little bit more reasonable of a belief except for the fact that that's apostasy. If you believe that and you are a Jehovah's Witness, you are an apostate. You do not believe what Jehovah's Witnesses teach. And before you start commenting uh, in the comment section, at the end of this video, I will provide multiple sources from the organization's pu publications. And throughout this video, I'm probably going to pepper in several different uh, um, quotes and videos from the governing body themselves, specifically talking about what is supposedly going to happen at Armageddon. Because remember, as I was saying, the, that cleanup work as far as what's going to happen after God kills 99% of the population, the official doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses are that they are going to be responsible, the surviving Jehovah's Witnesses will be responsible for cleaning up the dead bodies and cleaning up the world. Uh, the governing body in the past has speculated that perhaps God will use the birds to eat up these dead bodies, and perhaps God will use, uh, they've even said that perhaps he'll use antimatter anti in order to dissolve these bodies. Um, some of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. And I'm going to show those videos just so you can see that I'm not making this up. This is literally what they teach. We do not expect the resurrection to start right, right after Armageddon, but sometime after. Because first of all, the earth has to be cleansed from, from whatever the war of 
Armageddon left over. And uh, but there will be millions uh, or billions of carcasses of dead people that you know will not just let be left to rot, uh, and it would not be enough for the birds of heaven to eat the flesh. Now it is possible that Jehovah will, through a miracle, take care of all these uh, carcasses. Uh, he has the power to do that. Uh, we don't know the details, but somehow the earth will be cleansed before the resurrection starts. It says, and that's scary, there will be a rotting away of one's flesh while one is standing upon one's feet, and one's very eyes will rot away in their sockets, and one's very tongue will rot away in one's mouth. Possibly having a figurative fulfillment, but also very possibly having a literal fulfillment and Jehovah perhaps is going to use radiation to cause this phenomena that uh, people's flesh will rot away as they are standing on their feet it will be a destruction as mankind has never seen before now when Armageddon will happen after that it will be a time for liberation for God's people not only the destruction of enemies, but liberation and relief in many ways. But there will also be a lot of work to do, because we've mentioned that in Armageddon, billions of people will die, and they have to be buried. The Bible indicates in the prophecy that there will be groups of people, of brothers and sisters, that will for a long time do nothing else than just bury the dead. Since the world's beginning will come in upon all those dwelling upon the face of all the earth. This is going to be a terrible time for mankind, including us. When the war of the great day of God the Almighty breaks out, we will see the most spectacular demonstration of his awesome power as he systematically executes all the wicked. The gays are gone, the homosexuals, the lesbians, all gone. Now, you're going to feel sorry for these people? No. Now, how will Jehovah dispose of all these bodies of those slain by him? Ezekiel 39 and Revelation 19 tells us that he will beckon his wild beasts and birds to come and devour their fleshy parts. However, the vast number of cadavers will be much more than they can consume. Therefore, Jehovah will doubtless use some highly scientific means at his disposal, perhaps antimatter, to disintegrate their putrefying organisms. He prevents disease from spreading to us from their putrefying flesh of all these dead ones. He rids their earth of their foul smell. And believe me, friends, we need to get that cleared up. So if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you're, like, doubting this or you're somehow, like, if you believed what I used to want to believe, which was God would judge people by their hearts, that's not what your religion teaches. Now, for those Jehovah's Witnesses that don't believe that, um, don't believe that God would judge by their heart and are totally on board with the mass genocide, um, for those people, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you and I, we... It's hard to imagine finding common ground if, if you've really thought about it, if you've sat down and thought, yes, God is going to kill men, women, and children. He's going to slaughter them because they don't believe that these eight guys in New York who have been wrong, who have literally been wrong about everything that they've ever published— You'd be hard-pressed to find any prediction that the organization has ever made throughout its entire history that has been accurate. Almost every prediction they have ever made, almost everything that they have ever taught has been false. And they've either had to change it in order or because it's been proven false, or they've had to start shunning people and kicking them out of their religion because it's not true. That's how desperate they are to keep this stuff hidden. So, yeah. If you believe that 
that that that that's the the way it should be that God should kill all of these people because they don't believe that those eight guys in New York were actually selected by God because they cannot br- bring themselves to believe something so completely asinine then um then I guess we we don't have anything in common as far as that goes. You may be a good person in other respects, or at least you may try to be a good person in other respects. And I'm not saying that this makes you evil per se, because you know, cognitive dissonance allows us to hold differing views at the same time, contradictory views sometimes. So you may truly love people, you may put forth all the effort you can to help people, but at the same time, if deep down you're waiting for the day that these people get killed en masse so that you can live in a totalitarian utopia, supposedly, uh, by a, a totalitarian space dictator, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I understand that I'm getting kind of emotional here and I'm being a little... Uh, straightforward, but, you know, I don't know how else to address the issue. I mean, your religion literally teaches that children, babies, will be killed. My daughter, who's just turned one, if Armageddon comes tomorrow, will be killed because I don't believe that a couple of guys in New York were chosen by God because I can't bring myself to believe that. So my daughter deserves to die. So I deserve to die, apparently. I mean, yeah. I will leave the quotes uh, at the end of this video. Um, If you're a Jehovah's Witness, uh, give it some thought. Uh, actually take some time to think about what it is that you believe. Um, and I, I don't think about what you believe cause, because that may contradict what the organization teaches. Think about what the organization says and what they tell you that you have to believe. Because, like I said, I didn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Um, and I didn't want to admit it to myself that that was true. Yet you have members of the governing body saying that not only will God murder everyone who doesn't become a Jehovah's Witness, but if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you don't preach to them, he'll murder you too. Families understand how serious this is. Some can't do maybe as much as others, but we have as Christians the God-given responsibility to warn others. So you just take a look, and this is the idea Jehovah's getting across at your hands, and you look at your hands. Now, if your hands are not clean because you've been out warning, then they have blood on them, and you're going to lose your life. That's what it is. Like, yeah, he'll consider you blood guilty, and so the deaths of those people will will supposedly be on your hands, which is in itself a completely ridiculous concept. If someone... It, it's psychopathic. I, that's the only way I can describe it. It's literally psychopathic to tell someone, by the way, I'm going to kill a bunch of people, and if you don't warn these people that I'm going to kill them, then I'm going to kill you too. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe God is telling them. That they will be killed if they don't go and tell other people that God plans on killing them. Like, even even if you believe that there are good aspects of the organization, which I understand some people believe that, when you get down to the the nitty-gritty, these beliefs, some of these beliefs are completely immoral and indefensible in my, in my opinion. But 
that's all I got for you guys this <laughs> this time. Um, and I hope to see you in the next one. You broke me up, but but in love, so I don't care. I don't, I don't, I can never